Hey friends. I'm at Bathurst subway station and as I was coming through the concourse area, I thought about something and uh, you can see there's a bakery here. Now, this has been an online debate for the last many years as to what is better, the meat patties at Bathurst station or Warden station. Well, I have the answer definitively and the evidence to back it up. Neither. Because they're both made at an industrial kitchen somewhere I don't know where and that's just part of it see the other reason is that if you want the real best patties well you're talking Randy's on Eglinton not too far from Oakwood in Eglinton so neither Warden nor Bathurst Station wins. But that's not the reason I'm here today. Today I'm gonna go take a little stroll along, roll along this area here of, of Bathurst and Bloor. Or I might go down Bathurst. I'm of two minds on this. Well, also I wanted to see the um, the progress on what's going on with Mervish Village. As you can see, the, there's three towers there. And I think there's more on the other side. But yeah, I'm hearing, you know, someone told me that they're, they're going to be rentals. Now, I find it hard to comprehend how a developer can spend probably more than half a billion dollars and then not be able to uh, really collect on that for many, many years. Usually, developers want to get in, get out with their money and let mortgages for other people do it, not them having to carry it. So unless there's somebody else buying the property, I don't know. Or maybe some of the buildings are rentals and others are condo. That would make more sense. And not the whole entire project being rentals. Wow, it's only uh, three o'clock and it's really busy right here. And then I notice why. I see a lot of students. So obviously, school just got out. But yeah, if you're like me and you remember growing up in the city of Toronto, well, this was the corner where Honest Ed's was. And uh, although I didn't live in the West End here, I lived in the East End, it was more of actually to come here, it was more like an adventure. A family adventure. It wasn't, uh, well, we, we came here shopping, but it was like, you know, going to this mystical place that was Honest Ed's. So yeah, I decided to go down Bathurst instead of going along Bloor. I don't know really what you can see down Bathurst, and that's why maybe I'm, you know, I know only one thing that I want to see down here, but I don't really know much else about this uh, this area. Well, I know a lot about the area, but about the things that uh, you would want to see. Thank you. Oh, that's the other thing. When they developed... Uh, around here, there was a couple of holdouts. This was one of them, and I believe there's another one down further. So, what, rather than, you know, they couldn't buy these properties, so, rather than, you know, just push and push and push, well, they instead decided to build around them. And in some cases, 
I think maybe even over top of them. But I'm not sure about that. So this is a rendition of what it's gonna look like. Oh wow, there's gonna be concerts here and That would probably be uh, Markham Street with the big pedestrian mall. But again, that's just the plans. And this former church is a theater now. The Performing Arts uh, for Kids Center. <clears throat> oh, there's a nice shot of the CN Tower over top of a streetcar. A 511 bath of streetcar. Now, up here, this building on the right. Well, this is <clears throat> the annex location of the Center for Social Innovation. Uh, it's a co-working organization, but for organizations with uh, a social conscience. Now this entrance here is to go down to what was the cafe. It's just a members area. And the other entrance is to go upstairs by elevator. Yeah, there's uh, some. Hi. Okay, well, my camera shut itself off again for some reason, but it was actually a good timing because uh, it gave me a chance to stop at uh, the Center for Social Innovation and ran into some uh, old familiar faces and uh, had a little bowl of ice cream. I was offered some hot cider, but apple cider, but I passed on that. I always found apple cider to be way too sweet. I know, I, I just enjoyed ice cream, but no, there's a difference in type of sweetness. And then if you, sorry, I wanted to look over here. They have not yet put up the dome yet, because every time of year they seem to put up a dome here at Central Collegiate. They do the same thing at Monarch Park. And I believe the um, the field is being leased to this organizations that are le these uh, recreation facilities. And they're still used by the school, but they're, you know, used for other outside school activities as well. And I know with Monarch, the, I think someone said they saw the, um, the, bu the bubble going up, but I'm not sure. They weren't sure. Anyways, as we roll down Bathurst, you know, while it is a major thoroughfare, most of what you see on Bathurst is residential. And beautiful residential at that. Okay, and we're here at Harvard Street, and uh, look down Harvard Street, and the bicycle path that goes along it, dedicated path, but it's not a separated bicycle path, unfortunately, which the city needs more of. But unlike, uh, they should not have more like what they've done in Girard, in the sense of having a giant planter by the corner of Pembroke Street and Girard, making it uh, hard for cars to see anybody trying to cross at the crosswalk. And sometimes have to stop at the last moment.
So you much prefer the housing, oh, beautiful. the house is on the right hand side. And the left hand side is just kind of, you're just, you know, there's no intricacy in them. But again, you come down either side, you'll see this. You'll see both styles. But when you look at brickwork like that, you know it's fine craftsmanship. So I don't know how far I'm going to go down. Might just go down as far as Dundas. And I'm going to actually start zooming along here a little bit more because there really isn't much to to see or talk about as I go down this stretch of Bathurst. It starts, you know, there's some things that are more visible and noticeable once you get down to College Street. And I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but uh, just a little bit over top of these houses, you can see the top part of the CN Tower. But maybe as we get, oh, you can see a little bit more of the tower. But again, it's just the top needles. So there's probably, won't see anything fast until we get down further. But it's interesting, you're only seeing the top of the CN Tower, you're not seeing any of the other downtown towers. Even the ones that are closer to us, which should be more visible because perspective. The closer they are, the taller they are to what, to what the camera should see. That's an interesting mural over there. That there looks like a church of some sort. I see a cross there, so it must be a church, but I'm not sure really what. Uh, I can't read that saint. Literally, I guess I, can't, I, I need to get my glasses improved. But I think it was said it was an Orthodox church. Oh, there. But trees are blocking a little bit, but you can start seeing a little bit of the tower better. Probably as we get between these trees up here, you'll get a really nice view of the CN Tower. There she is. Another nice mural. Yeah, cycling is probably not very advisable on Bathurst when there's a lot of truck traffic and no dedicated bicycle lane. I was found this place to be quite interesting. They uh, believe this, the church is still an active church, and which it is, but yet part of the, the uh, building was built above it and to the side of it for these residential units. I believe it's a senior's facility. 
So it's College Street United. Let's continue down. Down Bathurst just a little bit more. Of course, there's Smoky D's. Sorry, Sneaky D's. And glad they made it through the... Because uh, I heard that they were having... They almost didn't reopen. And look down College to the west. And look down College to the east. <clears throat> and to the east of us is Kensington Market. I don't know what this building is, but I think it might be still industrial, but it looks like a building that could easily be made into lofts. Whether it has been or not, I don't know. Yeah, it's an LLP, so it's a lawyer's office. Now I heard, uh, I was uh, watching a video this morning and somebody was talking, or yesterday, somebody was talking about um, the fact that uh, I mentioned about all these beer stores closing down and they hear that this beer store as well is slated to be closed and the property to be redeveloped. So it's mainly because if you look at like all the beer stores, they all like this style beer store they has a huge parking lot and well this one's a little full but the most part you don't get um as many people driving to the beer store as you would years ago so it's you know these parking lots are basically a big loss so when they could sell off that property and they could build one or two condos on there you know for instance here this used to be um it was a music place i, I can't remember the name of it but uh yeah now it's a medical center there's a fresh co in here there's a bank and across the road is toronto western If anyone can remember the name of the uh, stereo shop that used to be on this property, leave me a comment. I'm still scratching my head trying to think of what it was called. I know there was other things on this property well, but the largest place was a, uh, was a car stereo place where they would also do like installations of stereos. Here's Nassau Street. And, uh, well, I'm not going to take Nassau Street today. You could easily get down there and to get into the heart. Only a few blocks away is the heart of Kensington Market. That's a nice view of, uh, I believe that's Oro down there. Yeah, that's Oro. You can see farther down. to try this sometime there's a place that makes you Ukrainian pierogies and schnitzels and sausages and more it's like a, I believe it's run by the church and yeah it's Monday to Friday 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. in the church banquet hall 
it's all oh, look just take a look at some of that pictures of some of that food that would be like there's those sausages oh cabbage rolls something that you know I, I used to love making but to cook things like that for one person it just becomes like uh, more of a challenge because you can't do it well I'm sure there's a way you could do it but it'd be a lot of work for you know one meal I guess you could always uh, make a bunch and stick them in the freezer but I couldn't imagine myself eating something like a bunch of cabbage rolls for weeks on end because you can't keep them in the freezer forever This place here used to be a co-working center. And uh, I can't remember the name of it, but I was here a number of years ago for during a co-working event. We went touring all the different co-working um, facilities in Toronto. Looks like Good Ombreach is closed down. Another great shot of the CN Tower. And of course, somebody has to be playing their music loud enough that everyone has to enjoy their music that they don't really want to listen to. They're just being forced to. I'm trying to slow my roll down here because I don't want to go past that car with the music blaring out of it. I'll let him go further on his own. And now I can start speeding up. There used to be a bank there, but now for the last, uh, I guess, six or eight months, almost, no, actually it's been over a year that that has been a COVID assessment center, but it looks like they may not be doing it anymore but there used to be with lineups all the way up back there's people waiting to get their COVID tests done oh there's a beautiful if it wasn't for all those wire, streetcar wires and all that it'd be a beautiful shot of downtown actually maybe I am going to go along Dundas here but I wanted to point something out here this McDonald's it looks, I think they still have a drive through but it's the only downtown Toronto McDonald's with a drive through And in fact, it's probably the only McDonald's east of Pape and west of, uh, I don't know how far west, that actually has a parking lot. But over the years, their parking lot really isn't so much for McDonald's. It's a paid parking lot. I don't know whether they have some sort of um, uh, discount for people who are eating in McDonald's. I don't know. Yeah, because the other, the only other uh, drive-through that used to be downtown was the one at now closed at King and uh, Dufferin. So yeah. Although, I'm not even sure if that's an active drive-thru anymore because I don't see any cars in it. And I don't see a... Oh no, there's somebody rolling up to the... Oh, there's the menu board over there. Okay, well. Let's take a little roll across Dundas here. Just want to show you one last thing here before I end this video. Yeah, so just around the corner from the library here. 
There's a bunch of shipping container restaurants. Now, I know there's the ones at Young and Dundas, but these ones here have been here much longer than, that, than they have. I think this is the original um, concept behind having these types of uh, restaurants. Sort of like a pop-up, but now sort of micro restaurants. Well, those sandwiches look good. I believe they're Vietnamese sandwiches. Oh, jerk chicken. Not sure what that one was. Vegan specials. <laughs> Elevated Filipino street food. Nom nom nom. Hey, well, there's even more down here. Yeah, this is an early childhood center, but it was a, a newcomer center. But this used to be a community center. I think the community center is just over here. Oh, you have some artists creating a mural. Oh, I can smell that paint. And there's a bicycle repair place. And this is Damascan cuisine. I'm not sure that is, but then we'll go down to the last few here. And uh, yeah, so okay, it still is a community center, this building. This is the Scatting Court Community Center. Snacko looks closed down, but there's a coffee shop there and a uh, deep fried cheesecake. That's something I've never heard of before. Mac and cheese bites, oh, they're always good. Cauliflower fritters. Yeah, so it's going to take you into this park and I believe there's a, a hockey rink in here, and there's also a, I believe there's some, there's a, there's a swimming pool right over there, which obviously is closed. They closed all the pools, the outdoor pools in Toronto around uh, Labor Day. Now, this is something. It looks like there's a garden here. Uh, some wow, some big, huge leaves. I don't know what those are. Still more of these containers, but these just seem to be like storage. Or maybe they're for future development. They're just being stored here. Or they were previously used, but now have just gone back to start. This one here had a high roof. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that like button. You know, if you haven't already, please subscribe. And hit that little notification bell, because it tells uh, YouTube that... Uh, my uh, content is relevant to you and that uh, other people might want to see my content. So, until we roll again, which I really hope that you'll come back and roll with me again, have yourself a fantastic day and just keep rolling. Hey friends. Nope, the video's not over yet because I was coming down uh, Spadina, heading toward another location I was thinking of filming and all of a sudden I came across these little android or dro bots or whatever they are 
and uh, there was like five of them here. And these are all like, they deliver food. I don't know whether they're autonomous or whether somebody actually sits and controls them remotely and drives them around the city. But I just want to add that to the video and uh, I think that's it. This was really the absolute end of that video. Really. Don't forget to subscribe, comment and smash that like button.